She Dances on Jackson by Vanessa Winship. Measures in at just under 10 inches by 11 inches. Published by Mac Books in 2018. It was a reprint of the 2013 book, but it was this was republished to coincide with her retrospective at the Barbican in June, September 2018. It's got the most gorgeous linen embossed hardcover. It's gorgeous. It's got this like lovely texture to it. And if I spread it out, it's a bit dark in my little setup here, and it's quite a tricky, it's quite a tricky focus. So just bear with that. Uh, I'll bring it back and put it back, and I'll recapture the focus. There's 64 tritone plates like this. Beautiful quality, absolutely stunningly printed. And there's 144 pages. There's no text to it. There is some information on the back. These photographs were taken between 2011 and winter 2012. California, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, New Mexico, New York, Ohio, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas, Utah and Virginia. She was a recipient of the Henry Cartier Bresson Award which helped fund the book. And it's a, it's a road trip. It's quite interesting, it's in black and white, an American road trip in black and white, not often done. What's it about? That's the first picture. Now, the majority of the pictures fall on the right, so I'm just gonna bring it down because these images need really looking at. They're, they're so stunning and quiet. The opening picture doesn't give us an indication on where it is and that's interesting there's no reference to any geographical location the book feels like it's all in one place and it is effectively as it's in America but there's no it, it, it brings it all down into one representation of this big country and you can sort of work out maybe roughly where people are based by some of their, their clothes and stuff like that. But anyway, this picture really sets the book up for me. It sort of contradicts the rest of the book because it's the book where there's movement in it. Everything else is still, it's quiet, it's caught in time. I wonder if this is that little metaphor for that silence and that ripple of destruction going through the water, which in relation to where these people and when they were photographed and who they are are living within that ripple and that's quite deep but there's nothing else in the book which is moving there's a picture of a, a deer in here it's perfectly still there's nothing really moving in it it's very quiet time stood still but this picture for me and that ripple you can almost see it it, it feels like it's moving and i wonder if that ripple there that concentric pattern is a symbol for the people living in that movement, in that end of the American dream, in that chaos, in a sense, or as, as, as in America as we know it today. Because we've all got ideas of America and what it means, depending on what TV film we've seen or, or, or our travel there. Now, this is in black and white, you know, it's really interesting. It's a road trip book, and it's it's just interesting that I like the fact that it's an English eye looking at America, and I just find that really fascinating. And the flow of pictures. I wonder what Vanessa was influenced by. How objective is it? I don't think it is. I don't think it's trying to say anything. This book's about space. It's about what is within that space. It's making you think about maybe where you could be within that space. It's a sort of, it feels like something from the 60s. It's quiet, it's peaceful. And there's nothing to give you any influence geographically. It leads you to just work the pictures out for yourself.
and there's something bringing it all together and and it's that feeling it's, it's a sort of almost like a feeling of abandonment within the whole context of it it is split into little sort of chapters and I, I, I don't know whether that's per country or per state I mean and it's a very innocent quality about with this sort of quality and this feel runs through a lot of Vanessa's work her style of portraiture so you're looking at the format of the book and it's obviously shot on a 5.4 I think she uses an ebony 5.4 and with a standard lens so she's got to have time she's got to have a bit of interaction with the subject it's not something you just turn up and shoot she's got to stop people and she develops a relationship with them and she gets that passive quality out of them and I think the passiveness comes across with the landscape as well as a similar quality to Joel Stonefall isn't it the, with the pumpkin shot there and I'm fascinated that she's done it in black and white I, I find it really interesting it's all textures it's all patterns it's all shapes it's space there's a mystic there's a there's a feeling that it's a bit lost within itself this world she's created the film shot on 5.4 as I said but it's HP 5 she shoots the sun Ilford HP 5 look at that it's beautiful and I know for some of the more fluid shots the quicker candid style shots within this which has got to be quick she uses a Fuji 6-7 so it's a nice balance medium and large format it's it's a lovely balance and again that sort of that metaphor for abandonment and I, I not only sort of this shot, only sort of just to sort of emphasise that point of lost community, desolate. People like almost look as though they're finding their way. And there's a sort of amazement, a bafflement with the people. It's interesting how she finds these people. I wonder how much she shot for the whole book as well be really interesting to know what the, the bigger edit was on this I think it's a brave choice to go to America and, and do something like this but just in relation to how big it is and to try and deliver a message throughout that And I think with the style of pictures as well, and the, the sort of narrative which is forming, you could almost, when there's nobody in the picture, you can almost relate people with that gaze, with that look, which that, with that honesty and almost vulnerability in these shots where there's nothing in there. It's hard to live in this place. It's, it's awkward. It takes a quite a skill to find some people and have the, the courage to go up to people who you see and ask them and try to relate to them and try and discuss what they're doing and then just being able to deliver a consistent narrative, a consistent storyline to the way your, your mind's unravelling as you're shooting this because you're getting to see a frame every time you look at something you're getting to see an idea and making it relate to the last picture you've shot and you're building a sequence up I would be interested to see some text with this I would, I would, be, I would love to find out a little bit more of the place and the person what would that change within the book I wonder Would it make it all different and seem like it's a totally different place? These people all feel like they come from the same street, probably feels like they all have the same aspirations. They're stuck in this no man's land of dreams and hope and being constantly let down.
the work this sort of stuff reminds me of Alex Soth as well with a big 10 by 8 sort of uh, dare I say that William Eggleston feel to things making the normal look interesting making the everyday feel it has its worth feel as though it's something asks you questions and makes you want to think about it and that's what this book's sort of doing and I find that with Soth's work as well there's some strong messages within this and I, and there hasn't been much given away about the concept of this and the structure and the underlying elements of what maybe Vanessa's thinking when she's shooting that. And I can see the textures and the patterns. I can see it forming, especially in the landscape. And I, it almost feels like it's the 1960s. And that obviously helps with the black and white. But there's a feeling of it's caught on a time capsule with the landscape because a lot of it feels like it's back to the water 70s. And, and I wonder if that's choice of location as well. When she's looked at something, she saw that element of time stood still. And there's nothing which I can give you to help with these. And you look at this and, you know, photography's subjective. It's like you make your own mind up based on what you like and what somebody else has told you and, and, and how you read this. And I'm just reading it my way. I'm just... I'm just looking at a book on America and I'm seeing some atmospheric and intense images of people who are not telling me anything. They're not trying to tell me anything, but there definitely is a passive quality to all these people. A certain person as well. And there's a sort of inner beauty within this, you know, it, it's, I hope that makes some sense because it's, it's, it's an interesting book, I love it. And it's a, I think it asks questions that leaves you to fathom it out. And because I do these quite off the cuff, I think this, this shot here was a 6-7 Fuji, I think. And I, I'm sure she jumped out of the car to get this. I'm sure this was one of them quick shots. It's stunning. They are such a skillful shot. Again, it's playing with space. It's asking questions. It's letting you do the work. And as I was getting at, there's nothing in this book to dictate how you should see it. But I do think that opening picture of the water ripple the concentric pattern is leaving you to sort of, it sort of sets the scene a little bit for me. But again, you'll read that anywhere you want. And I hope you'd buy this. It's, it's just, it's a really, almost a behind the scenes look at the, the pantomime, what is going on with America. It's almost like these are the people who make it make make up behind the scenes. It's the it's the it's the stage. It's the backdrop. It's the actors who are taking part in everyday America, and this is their quiet moment. This is maybe the ones or how she depicted them as what's left behind. The casualty is the result of it. That's got to be quick as well. It's symbolic of the deer. I haven't shown you all the pictures in this. You can get this on the MacBook website. I think you should just take a look at it and learn the art of creating a, a narrative which will ask questions but it's not giving too much away. It's a massive subject area done in a very quiet and informed way. And that shot, one of my favorite, beautiful. I, I stare for this, at this picture for ages. It's one of them shots where you wonder where they, how did they get there and where did they go? And you're sort of intrigued by looking at that girl on there, it's, it's just, such a fascinating portrait, beautifully lit, beautifully executed. Got the essence 
if her soul within that shot got her engaged. So, yeah, there's some deep underlying questions within this book. It's definitely a book you can learn from. It's definitely a book which can teach you things. And it's a book you need to keep looking at because I think every time you look at this book, it will tell you another story, maybe based on some influences you've just had on America or some experience or just the way you're thinking, you'll see something different. And I think, in all honesty, I think that's what this book set out, sets out to do. It's something different every time you look at it. And that's skillful. I hope I've made some sense. You can buy this on MacBook website. I will put the link for that at the end of this video and in the comments box, down near the comments box. And I will put a link for Vanessa Winship's website. Get out and buy her books. Beautiful portrait photographer. Lovely person. She needs to be supported. She needs to be recognised. Please share and subscribe. And let's get the words out there. Thank you. Well done, Vanessa.